um, the only problem was the next door neighbor had planted some uh, shrubs and little trees and things, and you just, we'd be going so fast. I, I imagine we're going 40 miles an hour down through there, you know? And we'd go on down into his backyard and run over his shrubs and things, and he complained to my dad about uh, me and my two brothers, uh, you know, damaging uh, the stuff he'd planted in his backyard, and dad told us not to do that anymore. Well, I went and got a cardboard box and I didn't think dad would know about it and uh, didn't know the neighbor was at home and I yeah I went down the hill again and uh, that was the only time my dad ever gave me a whipping <laughs> and I still haven't forgotten it but you know I remember he didn't do it out of anger he, he and this is something we need as fathers we need to uh, remember that we should never discipline our, ch our children uh, out of anger, but it should be out of love. And uh, he got his belt and he said, I'm, I'm going to give you a spanking. He said, I'm not mad at you, but I told you not to do that again. And I want you to remember that when I tell you to do something, I want you to do it. And that was the only uh, spanking I ever got from my dad. Now, my mother would take those uh, little peach tree limbs and say, go get a peach tree uh, limb off the, it was one of those ornamental peach trees, and she said, go get, cut one of those peach tree switches, like if she'd call us and we wouldn't come in, and, and she'd hand it to me, and we were little kids, you know, I'd have those shorts on, and she said, now you get back in that house, and you know, we'd just be high stepping it like that when I call you to... But uh, that was the only one Dad ever uh, gave me, and I've never forgotten it. But I remember that he told me, he said, I'm not mad at you, I love you, and I don't want you to uh, disobey me again. I'm your father. And I did my best to do what he said to do, and I had a great deal of respect for my uh, father. And I know I'm going to see him again in heaven. But we need to have respect. What I'm saying is we need to have respect uh, for our fathers says, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Verse 11, give us this day our daily bread. As uh, fathers, we need to uh, be providers and place an importance on providing uh, for our families. Amen. Amen. And forgive us our debts, or one translation says trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And we need to set an example with our families that we walk in forgiveness rather than in anger and in grudge holding. I'm telling you that when, if we uh, teach our kids to hold grudges, that's one of the worst things we can do because they wind up in the prison of unforgiveness as they go through life. We need to set examples uh, for our children that we are men that forgive others that have wronged us. And if we don't do that, we're making a great um, mistake and we're putting a burden on our children that God does not want them to have. But when we show what being a real man is, is all about that you can forgive someone when they've transgressed against you, then uh, that's setting the kind of example that God would have us set for our children. You know, I've heard, you've heard it said many times, uh, unforgiveness is like drinking poison and expecting your enemy to die. It just doesn't work. And so we don't want our children to stay in a prison of unforgiveness. We want them to have liberty and freedom and to enjoy life. Amen. Hallelujah. I mean, I know one person I, I, that uh, she has, uh, she just got into this grudge holding. I won't say who it was, but just someone you don't know, but an older person. And uh, she would not use a uh, certain credit card because that credit card company uh, did something to make her mad 40 years ago, and she still won't use that credit card. Well, the, uh, the, the bank that she was using quit using the uh, particular credit card she was using, and the only credit card she could get through her bank was the credit card she didn't want to use. And uh, I, I told her, I said, well, I, I don't know if you know this or not, but the same company own, owns both of those credit card companies. They are owned by the... <laughs> They are owned by the same company. Well, that didn't make any difference. It was that name. But I think she finally got a breakthrough and she got that credit card. And, and you know, uh, she didn't like it, but she got that credit card that she had refused to use. And, 
You, you know, people can put themselves in bondage with uh, grudge holding that hinders their life and it just saps the joy out of a person's life. It, it's a whole lot easier to walk in forgiveness than it is to hold grudges. Amen. So forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. And uh, fathers as, and grandfathers and all father figures, you know, this is, let's, let's take television, for example. There's something about, it's a guy thing. I don't know why, but us guys, we think we have to have the remote control for a television set. It's like, I mean, you go into most houses, you'll find the guy holding the remote control for the TV set. It's just a, a kind of a guy thing. He feels like he has to have it, you know. It's, 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 I guess it's just the way the Lord made us. So we do control a lot about what our family sees on television. We need to be sure we're not leading them into temptation and uh, putting the wrong thing on that television set for our children to watch, things that would feed them or lead them into temptation. We don't want to be that kind of father. We want to be the kind of father that, uh, that does just the opposite and leads them in the way of righteousness and uh, holiness. You know, uh, someone said uh, we need to flee temptation and not leave a calling card. I like that, you know. <laughs> we, uh, but uh, one person said, you, uh, you, you know, we're not masters of our feelings, but we are masters of our consent. And uh, everyone experiences temptation, but uh, we, do, we do not have to consent to give in to that. And we can, uh, by our, the atmosphere we allow around us, we can help our families. Amen. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. It's getting quiet in here this morning. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. And we need to teach our uh, children and those that uh, we are uh, in a position to father in life that uh, they have authority over the evil one. Amen. Amen. And we need to uh, teach our families that they can use the name of Jesus. And greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. And uh, we need to teach our families that there's no greater power than the power of his love and to walk in that unconditional love toward our uh, brothers, our sisters, our, uh, all those around us. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Jesus said, A new commandment I give you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. He was talking about that new Jesus kind of love that he introduced to the world. And when we walk in love, our children see that. And uh, the, they uh, learn from us. And, you know, when a person is born again, they receive this new Jesus kind of love. The, uh, as Romans uh, chapter 5 says, the love of God is shed abroad in their hearts by the Holy Spirit. But still, we have to make the decision to walk in love and to choose that love, just as our song that the Holy Spirit gave us says we have to choose love. Otherwise... Uh, Jesus would not have given it to us as a commandment. And so uh, he's given us this new commandment to walk in this unconditional love. And you'll also find uh, that Jesus, when asked what was the greatest commandments of all uh, by those around him, he said, uh, he said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the... Uh, First commandment and the second like it is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And if we can just set an example of walking in love for our children, that's going to help them to get through life. There, there's no better example than we can set than the fact that we're tender hearted and that we walk in love. Amen. Amen. You know, I, I want to, uh, I think to be successful in this life and in this society we live in, we need to have a, our skin needs to be as tough as a rhinoceros. And when someone offends us or hurts us, we need to just let it roll off of us. But then we need to be soft-hearted. And our hearts need to be pliable like putty where God can shape us and mold us into the image of His Son, Jesus Christ. And you know, as a, a father, I, I'll say this, that I, 
and I think for all of us, men and women alike, I believe our greatest goal in life should be to allow the Holy Spirit to shape us into the image of the Son of God, Jesus Christ. And I think there's no greater purpose that we can have in life than that. I, I uh, posted a, a posting by Pastor Francis Frangipan about a week ago, and I don't remember the exact words he said, but it was so good. He said, you know, that he was uh, believing God for a great awakening, for a great revival in America, and he was believing for that and doing what he could to, to, to preach the Word of God. But he said... Uh, whether that ever comes or not, he said, the greatest goal in my life is to uh, each day be more like Jesus than I was the day before. And he said, uh, uh, whether I see the great awakening or not, he said, let it be said that I was a man who walked in love and who forgave and uh, who, set, who set an example of the love of Jesus for those around me. He said, if I accomplish that per personally, then if we get a great awakening, then that's wonderful. But my first goal is to let God make me into the image of His Son, Jesus. And that means walking in His love, walking in His forgiveness, showing mercy and kindness to others. Can you shout hallelujah? Amen. He says, for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. And then he says, for if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive you your trespasses. Amen. Amen. And so, uh, you know, I, I think that as men and women, but we're talking about fathers here today, if we'll make it our goal to uh, uh, be more and more like Jesus, and walk in love, walk in forgiveness, and set the example of Christ in our lives for those around us, then if we can do that, then we can say, you know, it's been well worth living on this earth. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. He says, for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. No matter what we see happening in our nation, we need to understand that there's a kingdom the greatest kingdom of all is the kingdom of God. And Jesus Christ is our king. Amen. Glory to God. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Father, we thank you for the word of God that does not return void. We give you glory, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for this service. Thank you for uh, fathers all over this nation, all over the world. And help us to be, Lord, the kind of father that you would have us to be. A, a father who walks after your example, Lord. Uh, first of all, uh, loving all those around us and setting an example of godliness and holiness in our own lives, Lord. Uh, in Jesus' name, amen. And with all eyes uh, closed, heads still bowed, an attitude of prayer and with reverence for God, we ask the internet audience to do this with us as well. We thank God that you're with us in this service. And I'd like to ask everyone here, those watching by internet, to look into your hearts and ask yourself this question. Have I truly surrendered my life to Jesus Christ and asked Him to be my personal Lord and Savior? And if you're saying in your heart, you know, to be honest with, uh, with myself and to be honest with God, I'm not sure I've really made that sincere decision of faith to surrender my life to Jesus. I'm not sure I've accepted the gospel truth that he took my judgment uh, on the cross at Calvary and that by accepting him, I can have eternal life and be born again. You know, it may be that you've been trying to live a good life and trying to be a good person, but the only way we can be saved is to come to the Father on the merits of Christ and what he did on the cross at Calvary. And none of us can earn our way into the kingdom of God. It's only through accepting Jesus. But you know, when we, He'll receive us all just the way we are. But He loves us that He doesn't leave us that way. He gives us a new birth and begins to transform us into the image of His Son, Jesus. And if it all begins with a choice. Life is full of choices. And the most important decision a person can make is to accept Jesus Christ as His personal Lord and Savior. 
And if you're saying, you know, I'm not sure I've done that. I'm not sure I'm right with God. I'm not ready to meet God. I'm not sure I know where I'd even go if I were to die. I need prayer. Pray for me. Don't postpone that decision. Just lift your hand up high. Then you can put it back down. You're saying, I want to receive Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior. I want to resolve this in eternity here this morning. If you're watching by internet, God sees your hand wherever you are. Let's all stand to our feet and let's say this prayer, even if uh, you've been saved for many, many years, let's say this prayer to encourage uh, that person or persons that may be saying it for the first time. We know a large number of people are accepting Jesus uh, over the internet watching this church's services. And I believe we're going to have uh, some who knows where, maybe down the street here in Humble maybe on the other side of the world, saying this prayer with us. So uh, let's say this together. Heavenly Father, internet audience, say this with us. Heavenly Father, have mercy on me, a sinner. I repent for all my sins and ask your forgiveness. Lord Jesus, I accept you now as my personal Lord and Savior and invite you into my heart. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for taking charge of my life. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that I know now I'm forgiven. I'm born again. I'm a new creation. I'm a child of God. Thank you, Jesus, in your name. Amen. Hallelujah. Can somebody give a shout and a hand clap to the Lord? Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated. We want to remind the internet audience that we uh, have uh, six free books for you if you'll click on the free books button. Uh, also, uh, we have a prayer request button. If you have a prayer request, we pray over what you send us. The request every Tuesday at an intercessory prayer meeting and take them very seriously. Also, if you have a praise report, if you'd click on that praise report button, especially if you just accepted Jesus Christ, let us know so we can rejoice with the angels in heaven and pray over your life. God bless you. Our service is not uh, over with yet, but we're going to have a time where we pray for those that just need hands-on prayer. And uh, we're going to open this altar up. Teresa, if we could have uh, two or three uh, prayer partners uh, up front here. It may be that you need healing in your body. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He still heals the sick today. And what you say, see Him doing uh, in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John on the way to the cross, know that He went to the cross so that every generation could have those same blessings. Maybe you're fighting oppression. He delivers from oppression. Uh, in, in Acts, I believe it's Acts chapter 10, Peter said, uh, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good and healing all who are oppressed by the devil for God was with him. And uh, Jesus is with us in this service and he delivers the oppressed. Maybe your heart's broken. You know, the, the world will tell you, well, you just, you'll always, uh, you'll always have that broken heart. You'll, you'll never get over it. Well, uh, Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to heal the brokenhearted. And that same anointing is here with us in this service. Jesus is here with us through the Holy Spirit. And uh, that anointing is here to heal the brokenhearted. So I just named a few things. Maybe you need prayer in the area of finances. It could be in the area of your health. It could be a family problem you need prayer about. Or just come up and you're not going to find condemnation up here you're going to find the love of Jesus and we'll pray for you according to God's word. If you turn my mic down and internet audience, we're going off with the audio portion for just a little while, but we will be back.
Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. While they're uh, continuing to pray, I just want to uh, tell the internet audience, we're so glad that you have been with us and uh, we're going to go on off the, uh, the, uh, the internet portion of the service at this time. So if you could let me know once we're off the uh, 